In today's project, we're going to be giving this Evolution 8 a caliper, brake, refresh. What I plan to do is um, pull the calipers off, strip off the powder coat, polish, and re-clear the calipers. So it's going to be a total caliper rebuild along with replacing the rotors and upgrading to steel braided brake lines. We'll, do, we'll be doing this on all four corners and um, without further ado let's get started. Guys if you like the channel consider subscribing give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Turn on your notification bells that way you'll be the first to know content comes out. I appreciate all the support thank you so much. These are the parts we're going to be installing on the Evo 8 today. The brake rotors are from Centric Parts. They can be purchased from Rock Auto. I get a lot of my parts from Rock Auto. They have uh, quality vendors. I've never been steered wrong and I've never had an issue with anything I've purchased from them. These Centric uh, rotors are uh, treated with paint on the hats over and under which should help keeping them looking good and keeping them from seizing to the hub also we'll be adding a couple of 15 millimeter spacers I originally ordered four however the manufacturer just sent two we'll be waiting on the other two but in the meantime we'll get them installed on the rears the pads are from a company called uh, dynamic friction company these are pre-scorched that means they're fully cured they have the shims for noise free operation partially ceramic and formulated to be low dust on this side we got the redone Brembo calipers the hardware and steel braided lines that we'll be upgrading to in the vehicle We'll start by degreasing the area that I'm going to work on. I hate getting my hands dirty if I don't have to. What we have here is some uh, Super Clean from Walmart. It's under 10 bucks. In the spray bottle, I got 50% water, 50% Super Clean. This is what we're going to need to remove to get the job done. So for the tools, we're going to need a 14 millimeter, and that's to remove the banjo nut that holds the brake line to the caliper. We're going to need a 17 millimeter. This is going to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket. We're going to need a some kind of a punch. Uh, I have a nail here, and then I have a little tool here without its tip. That fits perfectly on the pins that need to be removed to get the pads off the Brembo brakes. We have a 3 8 breaker bar, an extension, a ratchet uh, with an adapter to 3 8 uh, I don't have a 3 8 ratchet, but I do have a half inch ratchet with an adapter. A hammer for some tapping. And let me show you what we need to take off. Alright, so here's the uh, caliper. We're going to start first by removing these, these pins here. So these pins, just you punch them through this way then pull them out from the back so there's two pins one over here and then there's another one right here so once those get punched out we take the pads out we take out this little uh, tension to the tension uh, device off as well and those slide out through the top and then on this side what we have to do is uh, see if we get you a good shot here so we have to remove this banjo nut and then this is the brake line now my plan is to use some 9 30 seconds hose as soon as I remove this because all the brake fluid is going to start to drip out. So I'm going to pull it off real quick and then push some 
932nd vacuum hose in there and that will plug it to to save some of the fluid in the end we're going to drain all the fluid anyway but i want to avoid having a huge mess uh right now that way we can get the calipers off and start working on them um th these are the the bolts that hold the caliper to the caliper bracket like i said these are 17 millimeter there's two of them one over here and there's one right behind this banjo let me see if we can see it here. um yeah it's it's up here right here so that that bolt right there also has to come off and it'll be easier to get at once we take this uh brake line off so once that brake line gets off we'll have space to get that 17 millimeter bolt up and then the whole caliper will just come right off Here are the, the two pins and the little bracket. Make sure that you save these if you don't have a replacement. And then once once you got those things out, getting the pads out is easy. Just slide them out. Uh, I have to pry on the... Uh, push the pistons in a little bit and look you can even do it with your hand so I just push that piston in I'm gonna push this piston in and then these things will just slide out so there we have it all right next step is gonna be to take those two 17 millimeter bolts off the back and the uh, the brake line so guys here's the Here's the vacuum hose that I'm going to use. So this is 930 seconds. And I'm just going to cut a little piece. That way when I pull that caliper off, the brake line off the caliper, I can plug that hole real quick. All right. There, there's the plug that's not going to drain anymore and then the rest of this fluid will just clean up real quick and then get this caliper off next step is to take out the 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper to the caliper bracket Now we got our caliper off. We'll just go ahead and do the other, the other side, and we'll get to putting this on the bench. Here we are at the front calipers, and it's essentially the same process. So you have the two pins here and here. So we're just going to knock those out using that little uh, punch tool, and then on the back. We have the um, banjo right here. You see that? So there's the banjo. And then the top screw is right here. The bottom one is right here. But once those two come out, the caliper will break free. In this step, we're going to remove the brake rotor. We'll be replacing them along with uh, adding steel braided lines. And the car's been sitting with the wheel off for some time here. The rotor is seized to the hub. 
we're going to need to coerce it off. I'm going to try first with a plastic mallet. If that doesn't work, I'll move to a metal mallet. We won't be reusing these rotors anyhow, so uh, banging on them a little bit is not going to damage anything. I'm going to try some penetrating lubricant right around right here. This is where it's stuck. See if that breaks it loose or gets in there. If not, we'll add some heat and see if we can't get it out that way. All right, next thing we're going to try is the threaded holes, right? So most brake system will have some threads here. The reason they're there is you take a bolt with approximately the same thread, put it in there, start to crank a little bit. It puts pressure on the hub that's behind it, and it, it'll separate the brake drum or rotor from the hub that's behind it, okay? So we're going to try that now. The bolts that we're going to need are 8 millimeter, and these are uh, 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. And uh, we're, all we're going to do is thread them into these holes. So I have two of them. I got one here and one here. We're going to thread them in and then crank on them a little bit, and the, the part should come off. Right now it's still stuck. We should be able to get them off with these by using these bolts. Uh, we're gonna need a 12 millimeter, a 12 millimeter socket, and then you're gonna tighten them to where they just start to make contact. All right, so right there they're making contact, and then we're just gonna give them a little crank at a time each one. We might need to tap on it with a hammer. We'll add a little bit more tension, so just a little bit at a time. And then we're going to add some more penetrating lubricant and more heat. You don't want to overdo the, the bolts. Crank on them too much because you don't want to bend them. But between the heat, the tension from the bolts, and the tapping, you should be able to get it to come off. You just got to take your time and keep working it until it comes loose. There it goes. Saw it? So just, just release right now. That's all it takes, okay? Just some patience, coercing, and uh, penetrating lubricant and heat. All right, so that, that got this one off. All right, so this one's out. The reason that it's having this problem is rust starts to accumulate behind this, this, uh, this uh, hub here. Something that you can use to remove uh, rust is a stainless steel brush. So this is a just an expensive stainless steel brush. It's a little bit beat up. Normally the bristles are straight. But you can use this. Just kind of scrape around the, the... And then get in between the lug nuts and then also the base. Just like this. If you have any spots that won't come off with the brush, you may have to get something more aggressive, uh, aggressive sandpaper, and just get it in there and make sure that you don't have any 
rust buildup around that area. Otherwise, you run into the same problem later on when you need to remove your brake rotor. Get a little bit of uh, anti-seize lubricant. And I'm sorry, my tube is a little bit beat up. But this is just standard anti-seize lubricant. Get a little bit on a coffee filter or applicator brush. I'm just going to use a coffee filter. I'm going to put my finger inside the coffee filter here. And then just get a little bit on there. And a little goes a long way. You don't need a lot. And then just, just wipe these surfaces down. Now the idea is to get a, a thin thin tiny coat and you're going to rub most of it off. It's going to leave behind a film that's going to be sufficient to protect these two surfaces from corroding together. You got enough in an area, you can probably just use that same material and keep moving it around until you evenly distribute it around the whole thing. That's it, that's all you need. Let me move you in close so you can see. Okay, so it's not caked on or anything, it's just very thin, even coat. All right, what we're going to do next is remove this uh, steel braided brake line. Or actually, it's a factory brake line. We're going to add steel braided lines. So here, here's the, the end of it here. We got the brake calipers off. We're redoing them. And then it has a clip right here. So we're going to be removing this clip. So this clip is going to pull down. And it's kind of wrapped around kind of like a fork. Like this is like a fork around this collar here. So once we pull that down, this whole thing will come free, and then it, let's see if you can see my finger, so it runs down here, so here's the other side of it, so it runs down here, up to here, and then it has another one of these clips, so we're going to grab this, this clip up here, pull it back, all this is is like a fork that wraps around this collar. So this is probably a 10 millimeter nut. We'll take that off and then this whole line will come out and then we can replace uh, this rubber hose with our new steel braided line. I'm gonna grab this with some vice grips here. And I'm just gonna wiggle it side to side while pulling down. You can see how it comes off. You see all that is, it's just a, a little clip. Set that aside somewhere so you don't misplace it. And then if you see this thing just comes right off. Alright, so that part's loose. We're gonna do the same thing with the uh, with the upper one. Come up in here and I'm gonna grab it. And I'm just gonna work it side to side while pulling it towards me. And it should it should come free. So just grab it with both hands and work it towards you and see how it comes off. So that's it. The only thing left to do is to loosen. So I'm going to grab it down here with my vice grips and then loosen the 10 millimeter flare wrench. All right, what I plan to do is this is going to leak fluid. So as soon as I undo this fitting, it's going to it's going to drip a bunch of fluid. The reservoir is full. So it's going to drain it completely out, which we have to do anyway because we're going to flush it and then uh, bleed all the brakes anyway. But what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use a piece of this. So this is some irrigation hose. It's about, uh, I want to say, about half inch to three eighths of an inch opening. So this will slip right over this uh, fitting here. So once I pull this off, I'm going to stick this underneath through where this hole is. Hopefully it'll fit and uh, right over this fitting and just let it drain down into a plastic bucket underneath. That way we're not making a, a huge mess. All right. so hopefully you guys can see from there, from that angle. 
So I'm just I'm gonna grab this. I don't care about this fitting because I'm replacing it anyway. So if I scratch it up, it doesn't matter. But the one above it, I don't want to mess up. So that's the one that I'm gonna use the flare nut wrench on. So gotta make sure you go the right way. So to the to the right tightens, to the left loosens. It worked perfect, All right? So I just slid that over, let it drip down into the bucket, and then uh, while that's dripping, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this with some degreaser, wash that off, make sure I don't uh, the brake fluid doesn't eat up any of this undercoating or paint. The kit we're gonna be installing is by a company called Power Stop. So here's uh, here's an image of the kit right here. There it is, power stop. And it comes with uh, four steel braided lines, two for the front, two for the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and we'll install it. I cleaned up this uh, brake line here. So all around it, I cleaned all the dirt off, cleaned up all the threads on it. You can see it's all nice and clean and ready for the new brake line. So here's what the brake line looks like. So here it is right here, you got a banjo end and then you got the end that goes in here. So we'll be installing this the same way we took it off. So the banjo side will go on this side. So we got one clip that we can put on. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that clip now. And we got this clip. I'll tell you what, we'll leave that clip last so you guys can see me do it. All right, so I'm gonna... What I may have to do, guys, is I'm going to have to leave this a little bit loose until I get this thing in the right position. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is push this up in here and get this thread started. Okay, so it's going into its fitting. And before I make the final adjustment, I'm going to take the brake caliper and install it. That way I can get the bends correct on the steel braided line because the steel braided line is... Oh, actually, you know what? It, it turns within its collar. All right, so that's cool. All right, so we can go ahead and, and just put it on there permanently. Let's go ahead and do that. So the clip that we had before, we're just going to reinsert it. And it's all nice and clean, so we could just push it push it on there now. I'm just going to use this set of pliers and just gently tap it in place until it goes all the way down. There it is right there. Okay, So that's in position. We have a nut here that we can grab. That way we can tighten this fitting here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll put this so you guys can see. There we go. So you should be able to see there. All right, so I'm going to just grab this, put this over the, the uh, brake line, and then I'm just going to start turning it to the right. So it's already biting there because I already hand tightened it a little bit. But I'm going to give it a... about a quarter turn, and that's it. All right, so after we install this, we're going to check it. So this is, this is the part that we're going to be fastening. Let's see if you can get a better angle there. There you go. And I apologize about the crappy lighting. It's just the uh, angle of the camera to get it in here so that you guys can see what I'm doing. But what we're doing here is, and my original concern was that this didn't rotate, but this does rotate inside of the sleeve, which is very nice that they did this. We're going to install the retainer just like before. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to try to use this plastic hammer here to 
gently hammer this in place. And that worked out real well. Perfect. All right, so now as you can see, we still can move this in and out and turn it. That way, if it needs any adjustment to attach to the caliper that we're going to reinstall, we'll be able to do that. All right, I'm going to back up the camera. That way um, I can show you the installation of the new rotor. And then we'll put the camera back in this position so you guys can see the reinstallation of the freshly redone calipers. We're going to be using some alcohol to remove the oils from the surface of this rotor. All rotors, when they're new and they come shipped in a plastic bag, they usually be covered with some kind of machining oil to keep them from rusting. We must remove this coating before putting our calipers and pads together. I'm going to use to hold the rotors in place while we install the calipers is going to be a couple of the lug nuts. Before we install the front calipers in the car, we need to make sure that we torque these flare nuts properly. So there's one on each side. And typically what you'd use for that is a flare nut wrench. However, there is no way to use a flare nut wrench with a torque wrench. And if you guys have uh, ever been curious on how you would tighten a flare nut, you need you need one of the you need this tool right here. So this is this is called a crow's foot, and this is a flare nut crow's foot. It is three eighths inch drive. I, I have yet to find one in quarter inch. I'm sure someone makes it, but uh, it's not available locally. So what I'll be using is I'll be using this with a three eighths to quarter inch adapter uh, on a small extension and an inch pound torque wrench. So this, this torque wrench right here, so this is an inch pound torque wrench. There's the adapters I was talking about. And uh, the manual talks about the torque of the bleeder valves. Well, the bleeder valves and this flare nut is essentially the same it's the same thing. So whatever value they're using here could apply here as well because these two sides are interchangeable depending on which side of the car they're on. 124 inch pounds plus or minus 18 inch pounds. So I'm going to go with the 124 inch pounds. So here I'm going to set I'm going to set the uh, the wrench to it. So okay, here it is, uh, torque inch pounds. All right, so this one, this little torque wrench I got from Harbor Freight. Okay, so here's 120 up here. I don't know if you can see that. So 120 is right there. 120. So I'm going to hit 120. So there's 120, 121, 122, 123, and 124. So that's 124 and I'm going to lock it. And for these for this to work properly, you would think that setting it up like this would be the way to use it. But but this is this is not this is not proper because the distance between the handle and this point is longer if we if we use it up here. So what you got to do is you got to turn it 90 degrees. So by turning it 90 degrees now you are at the same level as as the distance between the tip and the handle. And this, this is how you would use the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this one, show you guys how to do it. So we're going to tighten this way. Tighten it till it clicks. And then when you when you want to reposition it, you gotta make sure that you're not uh, using the ratchet feature. You're just lifting and turning. What I'm looking for here, what I'm looking at here, guys, is I want to make sure I'm not hitting the, the newly painted caliper with, with the okay, so that's it right there. You heard it? 
So that's it right there. That's our that's our torque. So we got it. We got it nailed right there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. And the reason you want to do this. So in this case, we gotta bring it down this way. The reason you want to do it like this is you don't want to risk getting this thing in the car, and then having it leak all over the place when you start applying the brake fluid and bleeding the brakes. So I'm just slowly turning it. That's it. So that, that's properly torqued. So now we don't have to worry about this thing leaking or having any problems. We just put it right in the car, torque the banjo bolt in the back according to spec, torque also the stainless steel line that we're going to upgrade to, to the factory line that's in the car, and that one is 140 inch pounds. And then once you do that, then you're, you're done. You're confident that none of these points are going to leak, and you're not going to have any issues. That was, uh, I was stressed out about that, and, uh, and anyway, so that, that's the right way to do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this caliper on there now, and then we'll we'll button it up when we get to the back side. All right, guys. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque these bolts. These are 19 millimeter bolts. The there's two different torques it uh, ways that you can tighten this. The first one is being dry, which is what the service manual torque specs are. And if you're gonna do it that way, the torque spec is 80 foot pounds. Uh, I am going to lubricate this bolt with some anti seize lubricant, which is gonna allow it to go in a lot easier so it's not going to require that much torque to get the same clamping power as it would if it was dry tightened so in my case it's going to be uh 60 foot pounds which is exactly 25 percent less so i'm going to go ahead and treat this bolt with the anti-seize lubricant and then uh tighten it down And the reason that I'm using uh, the anti-seize lubricant is because these are dissimilar metals and uh, they will chemically react with each other when exposed to corrosive environment. So I'm going to make sure that I have the anti-seize lubricant on here. Okay, so you can see it's, it's lightly coated. It's not really caked on or anything, just a little bit. And this is what's going to help us out here. I'm gonna stick I'm gonna stick a pin up here so that I can hold this caliper from falling down. Okay, I got my torque wrench set to 60 foot pounds. So I'll just be tightening this up. Tighten up the top one a little bit, and I'm going to do the bottom a little bit, and then we'll, we'll get to our final torque in a second. There, you might be able to see better. And there it is. I'm just going to move down to the bottom. So now the next thing would be the banjo, and uh, let me find the banjo torque. The banjo is going to have two crush washers, one on the inside, one on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and install that, Let's see if you guys can see the banjo bolt. Yeah, 
you can see here. So it's gonna go right here. Okay, so here's our steel, steel braided line. I'm gonna put one washer on one side, one washer on the other side, and then the banjo bolt in between. Just like that, okay? And then I'm gonna start threading it in by hand. So I don't wanna tighten this yet and make sure that it threads in there properly. So always thread these things in by hand. You don't wanna start cranking on it or anything because sometimes these, these banjo bolts can be tricky because they're not turned the right way, like in this case. And then you need to make sure that you got your thread going properly before you tighten it down. And it'll straighten out as you're, as you're, you're tightening it. The torque for the banjo bolt is 22 foot pounds. So we got our torque wrench here set to 22 foot pounds and we'll just be tightening it till it clicks. Okay, that's it guys. So that thing's on. Now all we got to do is just put the pads back on, the pins and the retainers okay to install our pads we got two pads if you notice one of the pads has this little metal piece on it this is called a uh, wear indicator and what happens is when it gets down to the level of this piece of metal this piece of metal will start rubbing on the rotor and it causes a whole bunch of noise and racket so i'm going to put this toward the outside it really doesn't matter which way it goes but if you have it on the outside you can probably peek uh, through the through the uh, front of the wheel and see it that way you know how far you are before getting to that wear indicator so it just makes sense to me to put it someplace where it's visible but it really doesn't matter it can go on either side so you're just putting your pad in place and then uh, we're going to use the the hardware to 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 secure it so here's this is the hardware that holds it down And it goes like it goes like this so facing this way so it's going to seat down and then you have the pins has a little collar on one side the collar goes toward the back and it slides in between the the uh the brake pads so we're gonna have maybe shim these little brake pads out a little bit you want to make sure they get through your brake pads brake pads have a little hole so it's going to go between the brake pad under the piece of hardware to the other brake pad and into the little into the little hole all right so we're going to do the same with this side i'm going to go ahead and just tap this one in you want to tap it in using a a little punch tool i don't have a punch tool so i'm just going to use a little um uh, nail but a punch tool is the the correct tool to use for this all we need to do now is just drive this pin in and that's going to secure this bottom one so it doesn't move around what I'm going to use is, uh, I got a little screwdriver that is missing its end. So I'm going to use that along with a little plastic hammer and just bang on this and it should drive it in. You want to whack it a little bit more until it goes all the way in. There you go. All right, so that's set in all the way. So it's in about... I would say about a sixteenth of an inch. So now we're just going to repeat the same thing with the top. Let me readjust the phone. So now that we have it like this. Now we can we're going to have to push this side down and then insert the pin, holding it down, making sure you get in all the way to the other side. Okay, I see it already on the other side. Now all we got to do is just drive this, this thing in. So again, same process. I'm going to hold this little tool up here and I'm going to bang the end of this with this hammer. And that's it. Okay, so that's complete installation of the pads, the caliper, the bracket, and the retaining pins on a Brembo 4 piston caliper on a 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8.
next we're going to be removing this rear rotor and uh, we're going to try we're going to try just pulling it off first see if it'll come off if not we'll try coercing it with uh, some uh, hammering and if that doesn't work then we're going to need to use some penetrating lubricant some heat uh, hammer on it some more and then uh, if that still doesn't work we're going to need to thread a couple of bolts in there that way we can create tension along with the banging the heat and the penetrating lubricant to get the thing off okay what we're going to do next is we're going to clean up this area here so I'm going to hit that with a wire brush and it looks like I had taken this off before because there's still signs of anti-seize lubricant and that's the reason it came off so easily I'll uh, clean this up with a uh, stainless steel brush and then uh, use some degreaser on it and then we're going to reapply some anti-seize lubricant to these surfaces that way we can ensure that they that they don't get stuck and they continue to come out pretty easy Right, that looks good next thing we're going to do is take you guys around here so you can see so what we're going to do is we're going to replace we're going to remove this stock brake line so this is the rubber line we're going to take it off and replace it with a stainless steel one now what we want to make sure that we do is we route it the same way so if you see it goes in between this uh upper control arm and uh the uh, shock absorber so we got to make sure that we orient it the same way right so it's going to come from the brake line, the hard line, to the elbow. And then in between the upper um, control arm and uh, shock absorber. Okay, And then it just bolts up right here. All right, let me uh, reposition the camera and uh, we'll, we'll disconnect this line. What we're going to do next is add some anti-seize lubricant to uh, this surface and we're not going to cake it on or anything but uh, a, a light coat uh, and then after we spread it all around nice and even we'll wipe it wipe it off just leaving a nice thin film behind and that will be sufficient to keep this from having that problem again in the future And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a bucket underneath it, just like we did with the with the front. I'm going to get this hose ready. So when I pull this flare nut off, it's going to start to drip fluid. And I want to try to catch as much of it as I can in the bucket to avoid making a big mess.
you can pull the you can pull the little flare knot up out of the hose if you need to. So my goal here is not to take completely the finish off of the flare nut, but to get that dirt that's in the grooves out in the threads. So we just keep rotating it and using the, the little brush on the threads and on the the nut itself. Now the tube, you don't want to use the metal brush on it. I'm just using a nylon brush on it now. This line, remember, it has to go in between the suspension and the that upper control arm and the shock absorber. So I already have it routed through there. And then we're going to start to thread and make sure you thread this by hand. Don't try to use tools on it right away. Make sure that it goes in. So now we got it started by hand. So now what I'm doing is I'm pulling the two halves apart. And I'm going to continue to, to screw in the collar, the flare nut on the top, I mean. So I got them spread apart, but I'm screwing in this top thing. All right, so now I got I got tension in between both. Now, I don't want to tighten it all the way because I may need to uh, adjust the position of this hose depending on where it needs to be for the cali uh, caliper to bolt to. So we're going to go ahead now and get the caliper. We're going to leave this loose here for now. And then once we get it all in place and, and bolt it on, then we'll go ahead and, and tighten that down. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Install the rotor. That has to go on before we put our caliper on. Now if you notice, this rotor has a, a viewing area here. That's for the brake shoes that are behind it that operate the emergency brakes. So we're going to need to transfer that piece of rubber from the old rear disc to this one. The torque for the bolts that hold the rear caliper to the bracket on a 2004 Evolution 8 shop manual gives us a torque rating of 40 foot-pounds that is assuming that you're going to be tightening them dry. What I like doing is using anti-seize lubricant on these bolts because they are dissimilar metals. you got a steel bolt going into an aluminum caliper. When you're going to use any kind of a lubricant on a fastener, you must take into account that the torque rating must be reduced by 25%. In this case, since the factory torque rating is 40 foot-pounds, 25% from 40 foot-pounds is 30. We'll be putting anti-seize lubricant on both of these and torque into 30 foot-pounds. Now that we got them hand tightened, the next step is going to be to tighten them to 30 foot pounds. These uh, bolts are 17 millimeter. And what I'll do is I'm going to just do a little bit at a time. We'll start with the top one until we get to our final torque of 30 foot pounds. So now we got that torque done. Next thing is going to be the banjo bolt. So now we're holding it with the uh, vice grip. 
to hold this banjo bolt in in uh, in position because it, it since it's steel braided, it's hard to move, it's hard to bend. So you got to hold it with something. And then we got our two crush washers in there, one on one side of the bolt, one on the other. And then we're just gonna thread it in by hand slowly. And I like to snug it all the way down as far as it'll go by hand. And once I got it all the way tightened down, then I'll release the, the tension of the steel braided line. And then we can torque it. The torque for this uh, bolt for the rear on this 2004 Mitsubishi Evolution 8 is 12 foot pounds. Slowly tighten it till we hear a click. And you would think that you're over tightening this. But these uh, these washers, they do have to, to crush quite a bit. It's like a spark plug. When you're putting in spark plugs in your car, new spark plugs, they gotta really, you got to really crush those washers. Same thing here. Okay. There it is right there. Thing is going to be to put the pads in. What I like to do is I like to put this pad on the outside. So it'll be on, on this side here. That way, from the from the rim side, I can see this little wear indicator. So before it even gets to this point, I'll know that it's time to order some new pads and get ready to replace them when they start making noise. All right, so now we're just going to slide these in here. And we may need to compress this piston if it doesn't go in. Which, yeah, we'll have to compress it a little bit. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it with my hand. I'm going to grab the piston with my hand. I'm going to pull towards me. And that's going to cause it to go inside of its bore a little bit more. Do the same thing with this one. This one i got to use my thumbs. I might not be able to use my thumbs. I may have to do it this way. Let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah, I think it moved a little bit. Let's see if this one fits. Yep, that one just dropped right in. Perfect. Uh, let me get the other one. And this is the one that gets the wear indicator. So we want these little tabs facing up. That's what that that's what holds them, these pins that are gonna go in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting one of the pins in. I'm gonna hold the pad up with, with one hand. And I'm gonna start putting the pin in on the bottom, and that'll that'll keep the pad in position. Right there. I can do the same thing with the top pin. I just hold it right there. Next thing is going to be this little this little retainer. Let me move the camera over so you can see how the retainer goes. So the way this little retainer works is it's going to put pressure down on it like this. And the pins are right on top of these these little areas right here. So I want to push one pin over across to the other pad and I may have to use my hand underneath to push this pad into position. So okay, so there's that one. That pin is ready to be driven in. And then with this, you can push down with your thumb while pushing this pin in. Okay? So both those pins are ready to get driven in. So now I'm going to get a little a nail or something and a, and a little plastic hammer and I'm going to knock those pins in. Okay, so here I got my my little nail and my hammer. And I'm just going to just hold it right there on the tip. And then I'm just going to bang the pin into position. That's it. Okay. Do the same thing with the top one. And there's not a whole lot of room up over here, so I got to figure out how I'm going to do this here. The top one is a little tricky because you don't have much room. And that's it. So that's all you got to do. Next step would be to bleed the brakes. Um, one more thing we got to do is do the final torque for this steel braided line up here where the hard factory brake line goes into it. So we'll, we'll do that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this retaining pin right here back in in this spot so all you got to do is push up on on this 
I'm gonna push up on that just like that, and then put this put this uh, this pin in. What we can do to drive this pin is the same plastic hammer. We can probably use it if we can get it in here to uh, to bang that into position. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna tighten this down. Something that nobody talks about is how to properly tighten these fittings. This is called a flare nut, and the flare nut requires a special wrench. So this this is a flare nut wrench. Okay, very important to use this type of wrench, and not just a regular opening wrench on flare nut fittings. And the reason being is these wrenches are designed to grab extra material. Whereas the standard open end wrench will only grab two corners of the flare nut, this one will grab five. So you see, one, two, three, four, five. It'll grab five of the corners, allowing more torque without the risk of stripping the bolt or the nut. So what we're going to do is um, we need to tighten this to the proper specification. But now how do you do that? Because you have this tool. And you can't use a socket on it with a torque wrench because you can't get over that, that line. So they make uh, a little tool called a crow's foot. So this is a crow's foot adapter. And it's designed to go on a torque wrench or, or a ratchet or any, anything that you want to use it on. But you, you need to make sure that you use this properly. And the manual gives us a torque rating of 100, uh, I'm sorry, it's 12 foot pounds. So if you translate 12 foot pounds into inch pounds, it's 144 inch pounds. So we're going to be torquing this to 140 inch pounds. I'm going to be just slightly under just to give it a... Um, to allow for a margin of error in case the, the calibration of the, the um, torque wrench is, is off by a little. I would rather, I would rather it be a little bit uh, under than, than spot on. And they give you a range. They give you plus one foot-pounds of torque, which will make it like 159 inch-pounds, and then 132, I believe, uh, on, the low, on the low side. So 140 is going to sit close to about the middle. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to use. They don't make... Or at least I haven't found this particular crow's foot with a flare nut in a quarter inch drive. So I had to get an adapter. So here's the little adapter. Oops, sorry about that. So I have an adapter that goes from 3 8 drive to quarter inch drive. So I can use my little inch torque wrench. Now, another thing that's very important is that these things, since they're going to go on the torque wrench. So here's the torque wrench. You don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to put it on the torque wrench like this. Because you're adding length to, to, the, to where the thing is going to take its reading. So it takes its reading from this position. So if you add extra length, it's not going to be accurate. To get this to work properly, what you got to do is you got to turn this. 90 degrees like this so that this opening is in line with this so now when we torque it the length is the same and we're not going to affect our torque values so i'm going to grab this from moving hopefully you guys can see okay let's get it in position so we had to add a extension to it It's just going to drop down just like that. And then I'm going to start to tighten it to the right while holding this, this other wrench below it. And then when it gets to the proper value, it will uh, it'll click. And I may have to lift it and move it. Now you can't use this like a regular ratchet by picking it up and just ratcheting. You have to pick it up and move it because you don't want to change the position of the, of the crow's foot.
All right, I'm continuing to 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 give it torque until it 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 clicks. I'm going to move it again. And just take your time. Just go slow. You don't want to over tighten this. We have to move it one more time. And that's it. Okay. So now, now we know that this is properly torqued to the factory spec. So here's what you get in the box. You got two spacers. And eventually I'm going to be picking up the second set. For whatever reason they were out of stock. I only had one set so they sent me the one. So we'll be installing these on the back, and then we'll get the front ones in, hopefully before the end of the month. So what I like about these spacers is that they don't rely on the uh, factory lug nuts. So what will happen is these will go in place and get fastened down with the factory uh, studs using their, their bolts, which are included here. And the rim has a notch in between each one of these fastening points that will allow any extra thread from the studs to to rest in without interfering with these spacers at all. I really like these. I, I wasn't too thrilled about the other type of spacers that simply slip over the existing wheel studs because the wheel studs on the Evolution are not very long and it doesn't give enough material, in my opinion, for the lug nuts to hold effectively. Another option that you could do is to replace the, the studs with longer ones. However, that's, that's a mission in itself. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install these. So let's get the tire off the car, and I'll reposition the camera, and we'll get going. Once we got our wheel off, all we need to do now is just go ahead and put the spacers on. It's a real simple process. Just as easy as replacing the, the wheels. We're going to take off the, the little nuts that come with the kit. And it's a good idea to apply some anti-seize lubricant on this surface if you don't have a treated rotor. Uh, in this case, my rotor is treated, and I already have anti-seize lubricant right around the, uh, the bearing area. Okay, there are 19 millimeter. So we have 19 millimeter. The factory torque spec is for the lug nuts is 73 foot pounds. However, I noticed that the lug nuts have a lot more thread than these nuts here. Now, the factory rating will give you a 73 plus or minus seven foot pounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna deduct seven foot pounds, torque these uh, smaller nuts to 66 foot pounds, and hopefully we won't uh, strip these 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 small nuts 
anyway, we'll try it out and see how that works out. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. All right, let me move the camera around so I can show you guys the inside of the rim. So here we got the rim. Let me show you why these, this is gonna fit. So you notice these big gaps here? So that's where those studs that are sticking out, these right here, they fit right, right, in, between, right in between here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down on the tripod, put the wheel on so we can take a look at it. We're gonna torque the lug nuts, it's 73 foot-pounds. That's it. Let's see what they look like from the side. Nice. Nice. Anyhow, I can't wait to put the car down on the ground. It should look real sweet. Anyway, it'll look real good when it's on the ground. Refresh the, the headlights, put the spacers on the front. You see the spacers on the rear look real good, even with the fender. The fronts, fronts need to come out a little bit. I think it'll look real sweet. And then another thing I plan to do to the car is to uh, put the JDM rear bumper on. So right now it's got the uh, stock big butt bumper for the US safety rating. Yeah, that rear spacer made a big difference. Wow, awesome. Rotors look real nice. Yeah, it came out great. Guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on your notification bells. Leave me some comments. Appreciate all the support. Until next time, God bless.